I, will, I would like to acknowledge also uh, collaboration with my PIs, of course, Sergei Barovikov and Jacob Herrhausen, and uh, my students, postdocs and collaborators, Bedford, Ray Fermo, Takim, Igor Krukov, uh, Mehmet Yalin, Gary Ziang, Ming Zhang, and also uh, the chamber team led by uh, Philip Kalella because our multi-scale fluid kinetic simulation suite, MS Flux, is actually built on the chamber package. So uh, this is a brief overview just of the problem. The sun is right here and, and it moves through the interstellar medium. So we have the interaction of two colliding plasma flows. And if you look at it, just it looks just pretty simple. These streamlines are shown here. Two streams collide, but uh, you have a tangential discontinuity between them. This flow is supersonic. You have a shock called uh, the termination shock, DS. Uh, under certain circumstances, we can have a bow shock here. It looks like is a, a combination of a blunt body and uh, a jet flow in the tail. In reality, of course, the physics is much more complicated. First of all, because the interstellar medium is uh, partially ionized, uh, there's more, maybe three times more neutral atoms than ions over there. And these neutral atoms can move freely through uh, the interstellar medium and the solar wind, and they experience charge exchange with ions but the mean free path of charge exchange is between 50 and 100 astronomical units. So, which means that uh, the transport of neutral particles should be modeled kinetically by solving the Boltzmann equation. Okay? So, but this is not the only problem. Uh, charge exchange, if it occurs, for example, right here, oh, charge exchange, uh, uh, of course, occurs everywhere where you have the difference in velocity between neutrals and ions. If this is, happens, for example, here in, this, uh, in the supersonic solar wind, you will create a neutral atom which propagates with enormous speed between 400 and 800 kilometers per second outwards in the interstellar medium where it will experience charge exchange again. And so it will heat up the interstellar medium, it will decelerate it, and many, many interesting stuff over there. And uh, one of the important uh, uh, things which occur over there is we, uh, sec in the secondary charge exchange, we produce energetic neutral atoms that can propagate backwards and are actually measured by a spacecraft, the Interstellar Boundary Explorer, so which gives us an opportunity to uh, analyze the topology of the flow and, uh, uh, and the physics involved in it. Right here, additionally, in the supersonic solar wind, you produce new ions, which are called uh, pickup ions, and they are never in equilibrium with the solar wind and uh, uh, usually have much higher temperature. So uh, the, if you want to model this, uh, interaction correctly, we should solve the equations for non-thermal population of ions as a separate, uh, uh, ideally kinetically as well, and uh, we also do, but in this particular implementation, we just use a uh, fluid model for this purpose. For example, this figure shows the distribution of plasma density along the Voyager 1 trajectory, uh, and uh, uh, a red here is uh, for the case when pickup ions are treated as a separate fluid, and blue uh, when uh, we consider only the mixture of ions. And you see that there is a substantial difference between them, and especially the distance between the termination shock and the heliopause becomes much smaller. And this is in uh, better agreement with uh, 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 Voyager observations. The solar wind perturbs of the interstellar medium about 1,000 astronomical units ahead in the upwind direction and maybe 10 or 20,000 astronomical units into the tail. This perturbation uh, uh, of the interstellar medium affects TV cosmic rays and maybe 
uh, the, uh, an explanation of the observed anisotropy of TV cosmic rays. Uh, Solovian simulations uh, provide us with uh, inner boundary conditions and ideally should be studied from the solar surface and, uh, <coughs> and propagation solar wind from the solar surface to Earth's orbit is of great importance for modeling space weather phenomena and which ensuring safety of personnel and electronics on board of spacecraft. And to address these problems, we have uh, developed a multi-scale fluid canary, MS flux, uh, which uh, self-consistently solves the MHD equations, okay, the MHD equations, gas dynamic oil equations, kinetic Boltzmann equations, and uh, Fokker-Planck equation for non-thermal ions and so on and so forth. Why it matters? It matters, first of all, because there is a fleet of spacecraft which is measuring the properties of the solar wind and interstellar medium interaction. One of them is a unique one, a, a Voyager uh, a mission. Now it's called Voyager Interstellar Mission because Voyager 1 is in the interstellar medium and is directly measuring the properties of the, of the local interstellar medium, of course, perturbed by the presence of the heliosphere. So uh, we can perform simulations and we are expected to provide uh, good agreement with observations from Voyager spacecraft, which turns out to be extraordinarily difficult. And I will show you this later. So another uh, uh, way to constrain the properties of the interstellar medium and validate our models is take into account the energetic neutral atom flux, uh, flux which is measured by the interstellar boundary explorer. Right here I uh, showed just an artist view of the heliopause and colored by the uh, interstellar energetic neutral atom flux, uh, flux at uh, approximately one kilo electron volt, I would suggest. This is from uh, Dave McComas' uh, uh, science paper in 2009. You can, it was completely unexpected, except uh, it was found out in, uh, that in our simulations, we already had this uh, uh, mm, uh, ribbon of enhanced DNA flux. We simply didn't know that we should check it. Okay. So, and this is a simulation which, uh, of the uh, energetic neutral uh, flux, which reproduces the position of the ribbon with a very high accuracy. And it also turns out that the directions into the uh, ribbon uh, uh, very much correlate with uh, lines of sights which are perpendicular to the magnetic field, interstellar magnetic field lines draping around the heliopause. This is just a very important diagnostics of the flow. Uh, a future mission, Solar Probe Plus, uh, will be an extraordinary and historic mission because it will approach the sun as close as some eight, ten uh, solar radii. So you can imagine the energetic iron fluxes over there. So uh, we should be prepared for this mission, should be able to perform simulations along the solar probe uh, trajectory and uh, uh, do some validations of the model and also try to explain observations because we are pretty sure there will be a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, effects and phenomena discovered by solar probe. And especially this is because the solar probe will provide us with uh, uh, time-dependent distribution functions of solar wind protons, uh, uh, electrons, and alpha particles with a very high time cadence. This, first of all, will, uh, will uh, uh, require us to store this data and analyze it. Okay, so the codes we are developing just aimed uh, to uh, help uh, SPP mission uh, in its objectives. And I serve as a, a co-investigator on the, uh, one of the instruments on, on board solar probe, 
PI is Justin Casper from University of Michigan. A lot of air shower experiments, observations all over the world, I mentioned just a few of them over there, show that uh, uh, the cosmic ray flux of uh, multi-TV cosmic rays. You can imagine huge energy and uh, it looks like it should arrive uniformly from all directions, but in reality, there is uh, definitely observed and confirmed an isotropy of those. We uh, showed that in reality, the presence of the heliopause affects the interstellar medium in such a way that uh, the an isotropy in the TV cosmic ray flux can serve as an additional constraint of the interstellar medium. And of course, it's very important also to explain the physics of uh, the cosmic ray transport. The block structure of the multi scale of MS flux is shown right here. We have an MHD system, we saw uh, uh, AMR and other data uh, choreography is provided by Chomba. Pickup ion transport and turbulence models are also implemented. We solve the Boltzmann equation, a simplified model just is a multi fluid, like for example, we can solve like 20 uh, uh, equations, gas dynamic equations for uh, four populations of neutral atoms. And we use HDF5 and visit for visualization. We analyzed the code performance. I presented these results uh, 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 last year. Uh, this figure it's, uh, shows uh, 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 strong scaling for up to 120,000. We have 160,000 already, which is uh, uh, as good as what I'm showing here. The uh, uh, weak scaling results are also pretty. Uh, nice. We are uh, performing kinetic simulations with uh, uh, right now up to 10 billion particles. We're using the uh, Monte Carlo approach to solve uh, the Boltzmann equation. And uh, uh, I know this is maybe far from uh, the peak performance, but uh, uh, still uh, these are adaptive simulations and uh, uh, even for uh, the kinetic solver, and we can write 650 gigs in about 32 seconds. Science funding, uh, as requested uh, by the template, I show our science funding, and just I just only wanted to show to, uh, to pay attract your attention to these uh, uh, heliospheric grand challenges. Uh, uh, project supported by NASA, and also this one, uh, REU site for solar and heliospheric physics at UAH and Marshall Space Flight Center, uh, uh, which is supervised by Jacob, my, our, uh, our co-PI, Jacob Herrickhuisen, and uh, it will last to 2020. So students come every summer, participate in our activity, uh, and do some things related to supercomputing, uh, use results produced by Blue Waters, definitely. Uh, and total funding is in excess of $3 million. So uh, this is just for your orientation, the heliopause uh, uh, and uh, the galactic plane is shown here, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 trajectories. And this plane, uh, which I called a HDP, is actually so-called hydrogen deflection plane. So what I wanted to emphasize, uh, this model is uh, in contrast to what we had like some 10 years ago, is data driven and data motivated. So we use remote and in situ solar wind data, Voyager observations, Lyman alpha backscattered emission gives us the orientation of the hydrogen deflection plane, which I showed right here. So Lyman alpha absorption profiles in direction towards nearby stars is also used and uh, results from uh, Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, uh, the interstellar medium temperatures and velocity are derived from helium observations on uh, Ulysses and IBEX. Uh, we use IBEX CNA fluxes 
neutral hydrogen density of the heliospheric termination shock are derived by the Ulysses measurements of pickup ions. And we also use multi-TV cosmic ray and isotropy results. And these drives our models. So uh, accomplishments are huh? just also just uh, uh, pretty extensive and uh, uh, wouldn't be possible without use of blue water. So uh, we uh, uh, performed solar wind simulations from the solar surface, right? We uh, uh, recently calculated solar wind propagation uh, from the Earth orbit to uh, Pluto along the New Horizons trajectory uh, and uh, further to the heliopause and demonstrated good agreement with observational data. We explained the existence of extended region of the backward solar wind flow near the heliopause for about two years near the heliopause before it was crossed by the uh, Voyager 1 spacecraft. We have performed high resolution simulation of the heliopause stability or instability, if you wish, and identify the areas of uh, possible magnetic reconnection at the heliopause. Uh, we also uh, uh, discovered uh, spontaneous tra transition to a stochastic behavior of the solar wind or flow in the uh, region between the termination shock and the heliopause. We investigated the heliotail flow and, t and its effect on the TV cosmic rays. Uh, <coughs> I already mentioned uh, uh, pickup ions here, and we do publicate, uh, we do publish our results. Okay. So this is how the heliopause uh, looks like when it's unstable, and it is mostly unstable due to Rayleigh Taylor and Kelvin Helholtz instability, but. Uh, really tell it due to charge exchange, not because of gravity right here. And you see the, the possibility of this is uh, 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 density distribution and this is the heliopause and you see there's a clump of the interstellar medium just penetrates deep inside the inner helio sheet and this is Voyager 1 trajectory. So this only animation <coughs> shows this instability right here and, and in this area at Voyager 2, it shows, you see, the destructions of the current sheets, which are likely due to uh, um, uh, magnetic reconnection. So this is Voyager observation. This is transition into the interstellar medium right here. And it was found out that the cosmic ray flux was in, in this transition region was uh, going up and down several times, galactic cosmic ray flux. And it was like considered as a great puzzle. And if you compare uh, uh, these results, observational results with our solution, you will see that it, it was absolutely possible that Voyager 1 was crossing the region because of the instability and mixing of the solar wind and the stellar plasma, uh, crossing uh, consecutively several times solar wind interstellar medium and where galactic cosmic rays are, uh, uh, have in, increased and de uh, decreased fluxes. So this is just can be easily explained. The wake of the solar wind, is it like this or something like that? So two lobes, and this is like predicted or proposed in 1974. Our simulations, the MAD kinetic simulations, show that although the helio uh, pose in the heliotail is uh, pretty unstable. There is no separation into separate lobes. We also identified, we reconfirmed the uh, instability of the heliospheric magnetic field down into the heliotail. We also showed the effects of the solar cycle play a major importance in the heliotail behavior. Right here, for example, you see the distribution of the toroidal component of the magnetic field, and solar magnetic field changes polarity every 11 years. So right here, you see these patches of different polarities of solar field. And so this is how the heliotail looks like from our viewpoint. So these are also the magnetic field strength and uh, this is density and temperature distributions along the heliotail. The uh, he heliosphere uh, affects also the interstellar medium, but not in an obvious way, because you will say if 
your velocity is super fast magnetosonic, you have a shock, a bow shock. No way, because uh, 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 secondary uh, heliospheric neutrals affect the interstellar medium, and uh, 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 the uh, bow shock in reality may be represented only by a tiny subshock in a, a very uh, strong bow wave which actually uh, propagates upwind into the interstellar medium. We are, were able to reproduce uh, the uh, draping angles of the interstellar magnetic field as measured by Voyager 1, which are shown right here. This is the elevation angle and red is the azimuthal angle. We also showed that interstellar magnetic field, well, actually magnetic field is uh, continuous across the heliopause. And this is the results related, this is observations of the 5 TV cosmic ray anisotropy. And this is the simulated figure in the absence of the uh, heliosphere. So if you insert the heliosphere, the uh, uh, simulation results becomes immediately closer to what was observed in this case at the Tibet uh, air shower observatory. Blue Waters allows us to perform these high resolution simulations of the instability, of course, because of the adaptive mesh refinement, but the heliotail simulations, uh, the, we, uh, it is proposed that we should go as far as 20,000 astronomical units into the heliotail. And this is a kinetic simulation, which means that just uh, resources are simply necessary because our computational box is very large. So uh, a broader impact, of course, except uh, not mentioning the students, which I talked about already, it's about the coupling complexity by self consistent incorporation of multiple physics and multiple physical processes in models. Uh, Blue Waters, we uh, greatly appreciate people, all people from the Blue Waters team, and especially Greg Bauer and, and, uh, and Andre Cote, and uh, the help desk was uh, uh, <coughs> future work. Uh, we were supported for two years again, and we will continue this analysis, especially the effect of turbulence on the instability and magnetic reconnection and uh, on the energetic neutral atom flag, and of course, we will be able to get prepared to the Solar Pro Plus mission. And just a few words about the, our paid collaboration with uh, Bill Tang and Bei Wong in Princeton, where they help us to rewrite to GPUs the kinetic model. And the kinetic model is easier to rewrite. Well, it's difficult, but it's, I mean, that it's somewhat easier than adaptive mesh refinement code. And, uh, <coughs> And we do the Monte Carlo, and the preliminary results are shown here. We identify the performance challenges, the original OpenMP implementation uh, distributed like change to loop level OpenMP. Uh, we explored array of structures and structure of arrays layout for particle data representation, and the twofold acceleration has been obtained. We uh, already showed the results from the, uh, at the paid meetings, uh, telecons actually. First open uh, ACC version of the MS Flux code implemented and ported on Blue Water's uh, GPU system. And 15-fold uh, 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 speed up was obtained in one of the most time consuming kernels, but there are problems with scaling right now, so we are working hard on it. So, and for this reason we, uh, uh, mm, uh, Bill Tang recommended also to get another uh, uh, accelerator pay team where, with Wei Meng Hu, uh, who will help us just to finalize our work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.